Hey, in this video, I'm going to be showing you how you can 3D print a model like this one, hold on, that would normally not be easily 3D printable. In this particular case, this is a rip of Kokiri Forest from Ocarina of Time. I think this is the Nintendo 64 model of it, the exact model. Um, so ordinarily, this is very difficult to 3D print because it's something called non-manifold. If you've ever looked into why you would get certain errors with uh, ripping trying to 3d print ripped models it's because it's non-manifold and the way you check this just to confirm it is uh so what i'm doing here i guess i'll show you let's if i can find this thing so i'm just selecting any part of the model just to show you or demonstrate i'm going to the edit mode and i'm pressing the a button on my keyboard to deselect everything if i press it again i'll select everything so press a to deselect everything press Control shift alt m and now that selects all of the vertices that are problematic, that are non-manifold. That means you need to get rid of these vertices or fix them in order to 3D print your model with as little errors as possible. So the first step here is to fuse everything. As you can see, my model of the Kokiri Forest is in a bunch of chunks. So I'm just going to hold shift and select all of these parts in my, um, my hierarchy. Uh, situation here. So this is the only real tedious part. Um, the classical methods of, okay, hold on. Uh, if you press control J, first make sure your mouse is over into the um, the actual screen area, so it also won't register. So press control J and it will join everything together. So now it's all one model. So the first thing I'm going to do is jump back to edit mode and I'm going to press A to deselect everything. Press A again to select everything and I would like to remove any double faces that because that could also cause some problems when you're trying to 3D print. So um, go into the tools option up here if it's not already open, the tools area. Also, I should mention I'm using Blender. I, um, hopefully that would be in the video description because I know I did not mention it in the beginning of the video. So um, down here under there should be an option to remove doubles. As long as everything selected, hit remove doubles. And as you can see up here, it removed nearly a thousand vertices that didn't have to be there. Doubles are just vertices that are on top of each other or just incredibly close that you don't need them there. So if I press A, um, or if I press A, I'll deselect everything. Let's go back to object mode just to check the model out. So uh, that seems decent enough. There are a lot of very flat areas, which I'll deal with later, because um, you can't very well print something incredibly thin like these fences in the uh, in the video game itself or these bridges for instance I don't know if you can see it but those bridges are incredibly thin and I don't think that would print very well um, so to the very next step I'd like to do is let's see okay I want to check if this is manifold first um, just to demonstrate so I'll go back to edit mode my fast a faster way of going, getting to edit mode is to press the tab button so that's what I'll be doing I'll be going to edit mode by pressing tab Control shift alt m to select all the non-manifold vertices and as you can see there's a lot and this is the problem with um if you're lucky you won't get anything and you could just try your luck to 3d print that on either cura or simplify 3d any of the um or the there's slicer as well and see how that would 3d print but in my particular case this is uh there's a little too many vertices to, um if you got a little bit of vertices, not a, as much as I have here, a method of fixing it quick, instead of just doing method number two that I'm going to show you a bit later, you can um, press delete. Hold on, I've got to select this. Press delete and delete the vertices. Control Shift Alt M. Press F on your keyboard to make a face. Then deselect everything. Control Shift Alt M. And you would keep doing that pattern over and over. You would delete these vertices then control shift alt m check what's not manifold and eventually you will de delete all of the non uh, manifold vertices and your model might still be intact in my particular case this is a disaster and i cannot have this so i'm just going to back up by pressing control z then deselect everything pressing a and now i'm going to show you method number two this method sadly will lose some detail but it's the best way of getting this to actually 3d print so over here, uh, I'm actually going to bring this up a little bit so you can see. Um, with your model selected, let's kind of bring this toolbar to the left a tad bit so you can get access to this tab right here near the, um, the right-hand side. Click that. So 
first thing I want to do is um, convert this or just select fluid. You want to change this to a fluid. So hit fluid, go down here to the fluid options and select fluid again. And down here where it says volume initialization, we don't want it to be volume, we want it to be shell. And this will all make sense a bit later, a little, little bit anyways. Um, so now that's done, we want to create a cube that'll go through or go ov over this entire thing. So I'm zooming out with the scroll button, I'm uh, pressing shift and then the middle mouse button to move around or pan around like this. And I'm holding alt and then left mouse button to look around just so you know how I'm moving and stuff like that. So what I want to do is create, so in this tab over here on the left hand side, create, I want to create a cube and there's my cube. So I want to create, I want to have the cube engulf the entire thing here. And uh, so to do that, I'm, I'm gonna press, I'm gonna select the cube first off. Then I'm gonna press S on my keyboard, that's the scale button. And then I'm just gonna move it out and try and make it engulf the entire thing. Okay, so I'm just gonna scale it out a bit more. And that looks like it's engulfing the entire 3D model that I want. So that's perfect. So with the cube selected, go to the, let me move the mouse so you can see, go to the fluid option down here to the none. Let's change this to domain. And now let me um, bring this up so you can see. Uh, we would like, so down here where it says fluid world, oh, we can't edit that just yet. Okay, one second. Um, okay, so viewport display, change that to final instead of um, preview. So up here where the tabs are, go to the world um, tab, select that. We want to turn off gravity. So let me check if gravity is even in this option. Nope, different tab. Okay, maybe this tab right here. Yes, there it is. So select a tab with the, the various objects right here and deselect gravity. We don't want gravity for this particular situation. We're going to run a, a simulation for, you know, you'll see. Uh, so go, to, go back to this tab over here with the physics. With your cube selected, go to fluid world. And now it's it, it might say negative 9.8 whatever. Just make that a zero. So select it, type in a zero. And now let's see if I missed anything. Um, that should be everything. So let me try this out. Okay, that that's what I want. Okay, so so now the um, the rendition part. So this all depends on how strong your computer is. You need a uh, decent computer, perhaps, to get a better rendition. Although you don't need uh, possibly not. So down here where it says resolution and final to the left hand side, right where my mouse is, you would want the higher number you put in here and make sure you put like very small increments higher. Don't type in a, a million because it'll crash your computer. So right now it's at 65 and as you can see, it doesn't look very good. It's very low poly. So I'm going to change it to 100 because I know my computer can handle that. And as you can see, the memory it's taking up is shown. It's nearly 100 megabytes. So I'm going to press this and up here, as you can see, it's trying to render a bunch of frames, which we don't need. So just press cancel. We just need one frame of it to render. So, and that's what's happened. As you can see, the quality did increase a little bit, but I'm not particularly interested in printing this. I can barely tell that's Legend of Zelda at all. So let's try increase the quality of this a little bit more. Um, this, I might not even get anything decent out of this, but uh, I have made some very successful 3D prints using this method. This is just another way of printing non-manifold 3D models, um, usually from video games. So I increased it to 200. Now, let's, as you can see, it's taking up a crazy amount of memory, but let's try anyways. So I pressed it. We just need one frame. So up here, let's cancel that. And that looks a lot better. Um, I don't think the tunnel is visible, the one that you go through to get to the Dooku tree. It is looking a lot better, though, but I can do Ted... Uh, improvement on this by increasing the number. So I'll do that. Uh, let's see, 200, let's try 300. And at this point, that's nearly three gigabytes. I don't think most people's computer can handle this. I don't know if mine can, we'll see. Hopefully my computer doesn't crash. So pressing it, we just need one frame. Waiting on it, come on. That looks like, oh, cancel. Okay, so I got lucky there, I think. All right, so this this is about what you can expect to get from a 3D print. And now you can you can obviously tell this is from Legend of Zelda. That bridge is actually a lot thicker than um, I would have anticipated. So that's a that's a plus. 
Um, so just as, as a side note, if your model, if you didn't have to go through this fluid method of making your model uh, or forcing your model to be manifold, another way you can make your model thicker so you can print, print out like paper thin fences as in uh, what you would expect again in a Nintendo 64 game, sorry if I'm not making a lot of sense, is uh, you can, add, can apply a modifier. So select your model over here, apply a, modif a modifier, apply the solidify modifier right here. And just, you just increase the thickness here and that'll make it far more easily uh, 3D printable. So back on topic, um, as you can see, the tunnel here is visible. That's, a, that's decent enough for a 3D print. So this is what you would get. So you just apply this uh, modifier that's already on this object, this fluid thing that we just made. Apply it, and now you have yourself a 3D printable model. Now we can confirm possibly, hopefully this works, that it's, so I, w I just went into edit mode by pressing tab. I deselected everything by pressing the A on my keyboard, control shift, alt M, and nothing appears. That's because the model is perfectly manifold. So another note, because uh, you could be completely new to using the fluid modifier in this way anyways. Um, this model that you're looking at right now is the a new version of your old model. So if you look in the hierarchy here, your old model still visible. It's this one here. So if I made my the one I just made invisible, here's what we started with. It's, uh, it's more sharp, I guess, is one way to put it. So if I hide that, make the new model visible, that's what we see. Um, if you're going to export this as an STL, I recommend you delete your original model. So this model right here is my original. I'm just going to delete that. And now I have this model to export. So that is how you would print out, well, how you would set up your model so you can actually 3D print a model that would be non-manifold. Dealing with manifold and making models 3D printable is one of the hardest things with 3D printing. And this is a very valuable uh, way to make those models work.